Hey everyone, today I have a super special episode of Crafting Over Coffee. We're going to welcome Lauren Quigley on to the channel and we're going to talk to her, get to know her, and she's got so much good advice for you. I can't wait to share. So, um, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. I want to hear more about you and what, what do you want us to know about you? <laughs> Man, I don't know. I am, I'm Lauren Quigley and I make epoxy free tumblers, but really I've done everything. My, my background is actually in ceramics. So, um, yeah, I, I went to school for ceramics. I am married to a military man, got married when I was 21. Uh, we went to high school together, but didn't date in high school. <laughs> um, so we've known each other for a really long time and we move all of the time. So when I first got married, I was all about ceramics and pottery and, you know, you can't move with a kiln or um, a, a, like a wheel or anything because right. it's so heavy. I mean, there's yeah. so much that goes into it. So that was what I originally started doing was ceramic. That's how I got into everything. <laughs> and did you sell your ceramics or did you just make it for, did you start a business with your ceramics too? So I've always had a side hustle. And my, the thing with me is that I get bored easily and I will go on to the next project and I will buy <laughs> all of the things, mm -hmm. that specific thing. So let me tell you, I have had Etsy shops for everything. I used to make a uh, boho decor. Um, I used to make it, make baby clothes, boho baby outfits, like custom clothes. That's so cute. Yeah, I did we weaving embroidery. I, I sold my embroidery and I did that for a long time. I loved that. But the thing is, is like, I could never find something that was worth my time to make because an embroidery project takes me takes so long. Forever. And sewing, you were sewing your baby clothes. Yes. Like sewing, they take so long. These little baby bell bottoms and all of these th like things, it takes so long. And I couldn't justify my prices on Etsy. I would like I would feel bad, like, right. you know, you, cause you have to, I didn't value my time before. Let's just yeah. say, that. so I was making all of these things. And I also did, I had an Etsy shop for crystal jewelry that I made and beading and weaving beads. I used to do all of that and clay. I mean, yeah. I, and it's so funny cause my husband and I were talking the other night about it's like, it feels like every time we move, I have a new thing that I'm doing. And so how long have you been making tumblers? Okay, so um, epoxy tumblers, I actually started in January of last year. Okay. I had a baby last December, but I was making cups, like tumblers, but not sealing them. I, you know, like using- Just vinyl and- yeah. yeah, because I was doing a, a lot of t-shirts, custom stuff for the people locally to me. Yeah. And that, was, that was pretty fun. Um, but it wasn't giving me that outlet that I wanted. Like, it's know, not as creative, creative. Yeah. like it's fun yeah. and you can do it and it's, it's relatively easy, but it's not as creative. I, cause I've done that too, as well. It's like, I get bored making shirts. Yes. Um, people like shirts, but yeah, not the I same, not the same. I want to buy all the shirts. I right. don't necessarily make them because, you know, that was another thing I would feel selling to like my friends and, and local people to me, I wasn't getting anything back out of my time. And right. so that's how it kind of evolved. I had got, originally bought my Cricut maker or it was a gift from my mom a few years ago, but that was supposed to be for like my um, sewing projects to cut my, my scraps and stuff for my baby clothes. And then I started using it for vi uh, vinyl decals and stuff. And so then I was making my cups and then I, thought find something to seal my cups with. And I was following this uh, girl on um, YouTube. Her name was Aunt Auntie Tay. Mm -hmm. And so she was using epoxy. I just jumped all in. And my mom um, and my husband have always been huge supporters of everything that I do. So my mom was like sending me like glitter and like gift cards, like, oh, you're going to have so much fun. You're going to be great at these making these tumblers because I thought it sounded so fun. And so I had bought everything over a thousand dollars worth of stuff. Yeah. yeah. Thing. Like I started out 
that with her, but you know, all the stuff that goes into it. Mm-hmm. The glitter, I mean, that stuff act re- the glitter. Like, why why do we glitter. must buy all of it? I just did I a video. I just did a video on my channel a couple of weeks ago where I talked about how much it costs to start up. And I was like, yes. bare, bare minimum, you're talking like three hundred dollars, but like bare that's minimum. like the yeah. bare minimum. Because yeah. most of us, we don't just buy like a couple colors. We're like, we got no, you mom. need all of the colors because there's so many things you can do. And then also the cups, like I started out buying, um, getting up to my free shipping by doing singles right? You know, and getting like, okay, the free shipping is at $125 or $150. <laughs> I'm getting all these singles, but now I've just surpassed that. Now I get cases and multiple cases on time. Yeah. Well, and then it does like, it's cheaper that way, like yeah. per cup. So if you think you're going to buy them, you really do save money when you buy in bulk, but it costs yes. more at the time. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That's why at the beginning, I, you know, I put so much into it and I started it was my daughter in December and I was, I made, started making epoxy cups in January and I actually never sold an epoxy tumbler. I, they were, I, and even when I first started with Crystalac, I didn't sell them right away. One of my things that I suggest is practice, 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 and practice some more and give it away. Mm-hmm. I know it costs money, but you really cannot um, jump in and just expect it to look perfect. You yes. can't. I so many started, failures. so I started with my, epo- my epoxy stuff started with my keychains. So I yes. somehow fell into the world of acrylic blanks and yeah. people were sealing them with epoxy. I was like, well, I got to do that. Like it looks really pretty and I want them to last longer. So that's where I got started. And I actually only made a few tumblers with epoxy. And yeah. then I realized, and this was like going on, this is probably two years ago almost. And yeah. then when I first started that and then I started getting migraines and then I was like, wait a minute. I thought I was using the good kind and yeah, that whole thing. So I had only made a couple tumblers before I switched to Crystalac. And then I was like, wait, I actually la- like making these tumblers. I'm going to go with that. But I gave everybody yeah. got one for Christmas. Everybody got one for their birthday. Like I'm yes. like, who needs one? <laughs> I know my mom and my, my mother-in-law, they were getting so many tumblers and even like uh, my girlfriends, you know, because they were fun and I would see, you know, ideas I would have, I get all of these ideas in my head and I kind of, for my personality, when I have an idea, I need to get it out. So, Mm -hmm. you know, creating all these things and, you know, getting back to epoxy, I liked being able to drop in my alcohol inks and and that's pretty much like a lot, how I did a lot of my, my tumblers and glitter and like kind of, you know, just mm-hmm. make crazy. And I thought that I was being safe by doing it in my garage, but yet well, I would get lazy and I didn't have a full thing. Mm-hmm. You know? And at the time I had a, a, a one month old, she wasn't in the garage with me. Nobody was in the garage. Right. Realized that it could get into your breast milk. And so once I got, <laughs> no. I went down this rabbit hole and I was like freaking out. Like uh, then Auntie Tay had like posted something. She posted a video because she was getting an allergic reaction. I remember. And then I, then, then it was like, that was the first I heard of anybody having a reaction to it. And then all of a sudden in all of the epoxy groups I was in, because I was in a million groups, (laughs) like, you know, when like something happens and all of a sudden you see it everywhere, then yep. I it everywhere, like, everybody's doing out. this. <laughs> yes. And I was, then I called my mom and I said, mom, I'm so sad. I think I'm going to have to stop making these. I'm so devastated. Like I love doing this and I'm, I'm sorry. Like, I know, like, right. I, like, I'm sorry. I have glitter and the stuff that you helped me get. And I, you know, I just felt so bad. And then randomly I saw Crystalac in um it was just in one of the Tumblr groups Mm -hmm. I can't even remember because the girl she just made a comment she was like oh you should like look it up and then she sent me a pm and was like oh here's the group to join and I joined the group and I was like a whole new world (laughs) (laughs) really it's it's amazing because I feel like so many people either one have 
just that realization, but two, a lot of people have like very serious health problems from it. And then everybody thinks they have to like yeah. leave their business behind or leave like this passion behind. And I think it's great that we've all been able to continue doing this. Um, yes. And it's and so fun. And the community I, is great too. Yeah, the community is great. And I know one of the things that you said that you were going to ask is when you first start with Crystalac. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Can yeah, I? So like you were making epoxy tumblers and then you switched. Yes. And, I, and so I was curious what you felt like was your biggest hurdle or like the biggest adjustment you had to make. So I would say the, the biggest adjustment that I had to make was reteaching myself how to do everything because I remember I wanted to use my alcohol ink. So I know that it was said in the group, okay, don't use alcohol inks or th like this will happen or whatever. And I'm like, yeah, I'm just going to try it for myself. <laughs> what happens? So I remember one of the first tumblers that I made, I did alcohol inks. I was trying to do like a mermaid peekaboo and I had put the alcohol inks, then put a uh, bright tone on top then put my decals once I thought it was dry. I mean, and this stuff, when I went to peel my decals was sticky, like, <laughs> like tar. And I was like, like no, I was, can't do that. <laughs> can't do it. I was, I, so sometimes when you have failures, you get kind of down on yourself. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I had to do with Crystal Act. Like, don't give up if you fail. Like I've seen so many people post oh, I tried to make a cup and it was a failure and disaster. I'm like, girl, get back in there. You gotta try again. Try I think, again. I think that's one thing that like people forget that like this is art. Like it's yeah. not the same as, I'm not trying to like knock anybody who does just vinyl decals or slaps vinyl on a cup or on a shirt. Yeah. It's just, that's more procedural where this is a yes. lot of, a lot more, um, even just like, ta you know, with your hands, like you're just in it, like, and you've made everything under the sun. So I, I've been sewing since I was a child and yeah. I still like mess up and I have to like rip out the whole entire thing. And oh, it's I like, feel you, you know, on you that. Just, like, you know, like that just happens sometimes. And I always think like, if you don't ever get anything wrong, like if you have a cup that looks bad, we all do. We all do. Yes. Yes. And how many cups I've made, I still have to strip <laughs> them, um, that you can still learn, right? If you made a mistake or it doesn't look good, you learn something in that process. Like, okay, now I'm definitely not going to mix those colors again. Or like, yes. Yeah. It's all right? trial and error and you just got to keep doing it until it works for you. And I, another thing, you know, coming in, it's thinner coats, but mm -hmm. you don't have to, I, people get so scared of that. Mm -hmm. I say it's a lot of coats, but I'm like, yeah, but I'm doing the, my max, my max, my comfortable max of tumblers that I have at one time is 24 because I have six turners mm -hmm. and I can, they're dry to the touch. I switch them out every hour. So yeah. I have four groups of six. That's 24. Yeah. You know? And it, th that works for me. Yeah. Like for me, I could not do 24. Maybe I could work up to that, but I like, I'm like, okay, maybe like nine, like well, I, have three, I have three turners. So I, then that's yeah. like, I can switch them out. But, um, I'm curious how you keep all that organized because you sell like a lot of tumblers. Yeah. Well, I, I do. I feel like it's a lot for me. So how I keep it organized, I have groups, of, you know, so I just, I pull them off and they're dry to the touch and I do th uh, two rows of three. And so they usually have them right next to each other, mm -hmm. um, you know, not touching each other, but right next to each other. I have, I'm working on just a, my computer is on my, um, I have a six foot table here. And so then the other half is where I put my, my tumblers and I just have groups and I use, I know I'm going to say her name and she's going to beat, but I use Alexa to, uh, <laughs> mine might hear uh, you too, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> to manage my tumblers. So I'll say, a, start a timer for four hours for group one. And then immediately after that, I'm like, set a timer for one hour that says switch, switch mm -hmm. out. So that's, that's how I manage that. And then as far as the business side, oh, another thing, I don't count, um, I don't count coats. Yeah. But people are like, oh, how many coats, how many coats? 
I, I personally average three to five days to make a tumbler. That's it. And I'm doing three to four coats a day as I'm switching them out. It just depends on what time I get started in the morning. If I want to sleep, right. then it, then it's later. And then I go to bed at my normal time. But if I'm up with my kids and up super early, uh-huh. <laughs> feeling motivated, then I will do, do a coat before they wake up, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, that's awesome. And then the business side, my husband, um, he's currently a per, a math professor. Um, we're, we're in the army. He's in the army. So, you know, th- this is just his job for a few years, but he loves making Excel sheets. Like well, he's a math teacher or a yeah, math guy. Yeah. I'm a math yeah, teacher. So fun. I'm like, yeah. I get that. <laughs> yeah. So he, um, he made me this awesome one. It keeps track of my inventory. As soon as a case comes in, I have the different tabs at the bottom. I'm not tech savvy. I am, I am <laughs> artsy, artsy fartsy. I went to school for art. I that's that. And then he is everything else. <laughs> so when I say, I hope I'm saying this right, but so my tabs at the bottom, I have my sales, I have inventory, um, um, costs, and then I have my wait list. My wait list is what, um, or I recommend to not overwhelm yourself is starting the wait list. I'm slowly going to be transitioning to creating a website where people will be able to put themselves on the wait list. Yes. Because right now, a lot of my time is just spent on social media and it's, I love the community, but man, I'm overwhelmed because I'm about to have. So it takes so much time and yes, so much time. So yeah, when I get to someone's so if you name, could send them a link and say, Hey, fill out this form. Yeah. And then yes. hopefully it can yes. work out that way. Yeah. So that is the end goal is to have my Google form and everything set up. But the way I'm doing it now is just not good because I'm adding everybody manually. And then I go in manually, take everybody's payment. And then, then I'm sending them pictures and mm-hmm. the way. And I know that my customers love that personal touch. And I love Love that too, because I feel like I'm friends now with the people who mm. I find for me, but, um, it's just a lot of time. So yeah. anywho, yeah. So I use the Excel sheets that my, I made and they're, they seem to work pretty well. That's awesome. Um, I have another question cause you, you primarily sell through, you just post on your social media and that's how you get your business yeah. out there. So I'm curious yeah. because I know I personally, I, have also had side hustles, Etsy shops and random things over the years. But um, three years ago, after I had my first daughter um, dealing with very severe postpartum anxiety and depression, I just had to step back and I haven't really jumped back in because now I have a second kid. (laughs) Oh yeah. So, but I'm curious because um, now I forgot where I was going with this. Oh yeah, like getting started. Did you just decide you were gonna make some and post them, and and yeah, that was what you did. Yeah. So um, actually, if we go to what you just said about postpartum anxiety and depression, I had that hardcore after. Well, my first, and then I had another. They're eighteen months apart. Mine so, too. That's a minor eighteen months yeah. apart. <laughs> so after I had my son, you know, I. I was super depressed and I was, I ended up just like kind of self-medicating with wine and, you know, it was like, you know, mom, oh, what do you do when you're upset? Or what do you do when your kids drive you crazy? You just grab a glass of wine. Mm-hmm. I started drinking a little more and it just wasn't, um, it wasn't fun, man. Mm-hmm. It didn't help me at all. If anything, it like brought me down. So I started posting about like my sober journey, I just decided to stop drinking about two, over two years ago. And so um, a lot of my following that I have on Instagram was actually just from the sober community and from that part of life, because I love to be empowering to other women. Yeah. Know that like, oh, you are not alone and you can blossom and just live your best life. So that is how my following started on Instagram and then I've always made things. So my embroidery projects were on there and that's how people bought my embroidery project. Mm-hmm. Like, Oh, I like that. I want one. Yeah. So that naturally kind of transitioned with everything that I've made. I would just post a picture and then I'd get DMs saying, 
How can I get one? Awesome. I want one. Yeah. So I'm like, okay. So but a mix between social media, handing out my tumblers, just posting my work or my behind the scenes and people saying, what is that? What are you doing? Like, that's so interesting. That thing turns a cup and you're just like pouring glitter on there. Right. <laughs> that is what I'm doing. <laughs> I've been posting. I, okay. So you're on Instagram yes. and you're on TikTok now blowing up. Yes. I don't know how that happened. <laughs> I was like, I, I, it's so funny because literally I posted one video and then I posted like two more kind of consecutively. And then I had to turn my phone off because all of a sudden I'm like, Kevin, that's my husband. I'm like, Kevin, Kevin, I'm getting all these messages telling me that my cups, my cup looks awesome, but my video is too loud. <laughs> I was like, the first video I posted was horrible. It was so bad. Like the, uh, something was wrong with. Yeah. You're really like, I'm just a person feedback. making random videos, please. Yes. So it was like, the feedback was unbelievably awesome, but there were like some negative comments and I didn't know how to take it because I was coming from the Instagram world where, you know, everybody's so uplifting. And I was like, um, I got to turn my phone off. So I turned my phone off. And then like 24 hours later, I looked back, I had like 10,000 followers. I'm like, what? Like, what's happening? Yeah. I had no idea. Like that was not my goal. Like, but now I love it. Now I'm like trying to set more goals, but that was not. Right. So are you, and I know on your TikTok account, you're focusing on helping other crafters. Yes. Craft where, yes. and so do you feel like you're now that you've been on TikTok for a little bit and maybe they figured out who you are a little that, but you're still getting orders through TikTok, right? So my, um, I had to stop taking people onto my wait list because yes, the people that are finding me on TikTok, it's, a, it's I would say honestly, half and half, half yeah. are fellow crafters asking me questions. The other half are comments. I want that Tumblr. How do I buy it? How, where do I go? Where do I go? And then they're not just messaging me on Instagram. They're finding me on Facebook and sending me messages. <laughs> You're like, <laughs> I'm like ah. I mean, I'm so grateful. I really, yes. um, that, that this art is taking off because my original plan, like 10 years ago, back when I first was going to school and everything was to make art, my living and make, but make ceramics, you know? Yeah bomb mugs <laughs> and now I'm like making glitter cups it like went the completely it's so funny so but cool so yeah, can you tell so, me more about how your wait list works yeah so my wait list works um you well how it was working I had to I had to stop adding people because it was so long I'm just like I can't give them a realistic turnaround time because mm -hmm. of my own pace and comfort so um Basically, they would send me a message um, and then I would add them to an Excel sheet that I have that keeps track of their name and then where they found me. So I had, I have two different Instagram accounts. I have my main one, which is about my life, which is Lauren Rochelle Quigley and then mm -hmm. Lauren Quigley Creations. And so then I was getting, and then Facebook. So I was getting DMs on all of everywhere. Forms, so I had to keep track because to go back and find. That's why I was overwhelmed, and so to find a um, way to get that going. Yes. But so as far as going down my wait list, when I move, when I ship out tumblers, I ship out usually Wednesdays and Saturdays. That seems to be a good flow for me. I was just going as I want, which would be like sending out tumblers every day. But I'm like, eh, it's too much. It's too much. So, yeah. So Wednesdays and Saturdays, and then I as I send out. I go down my list. And usually when I get to people, a lot of them aren't just buying one, they're getting multiples. So that is, um, that's another thing that I'm going to have to start taking track of because I like to go down by numbers. Like if I shipped out five packages, I'm going down those five packages. So sometimes that ends up being 10 tumblers. Right. And so you said it takes you like anywhere from you, you get a tumbler done in less than a week. Yes. So I tell my, um, as soon as I get to somebody and I take the payment, I tell them 10 days and I am usually pretty spot on getting that out at the 10 day mark. If it's like a Sunday, obviously nothing shipping on Sunday. Um, I mean, I let them know they're all 
updated, but yeah, sorry. And so you, you, you work on your Tumblr for about three to five days three and then do you wait five days? Yes. yes. That's your plan. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I, I let it sit and cure up a little bit and it will be hard when it ships out. That's another thing that people have concerns about. Mm -hmm. So many questions coming to me, but that 30 day cure time. And I'm like, but wait a second, <laughs> I have some Mod Podge behind me. Literally the back of it says time 28 days, right? Like, this is a normal cure time. I'm like, when you use Mod Podge, that thing's dry to the touch relatively quickly. Mm -hmm. So people are so freaked out by that. And yeah that when they're like, you know, they want to make the switch and they're like, Oh, all those coats and that long cure time. I'm like, well, it's actually not that bad. It's not going bad. I'm not sending out a, you know, a, a dentable or, you know, something where someone's going to like fall off. I don't right, know right. what they think. I'm, it's hard. <laughs> it's hard. They're hard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, that's so great. So you, go through a lot of tumblers. I saw on your TikTok that you buy Crystal Act now by the five gallon bucket. Yes. I'm on my second one. It's actually in my back corner right there. And then I have, um, a gallon pail left over from when I was doing the gallon. So I finagle into that and then yeah. I put it into my, my other cups that I, my yeah. and bottles. So I know a lot of my subscribers and followers are interested in starting to sell their tumblers. I yes. personally, since I have taken a break from selling, I, I'm, I, I'm now feeling a little more comfortable at maybe, you know, opening up that door again. But yeah. I was wondering if you could, if you could narrow down a couple pieces of advice you had for anybody who was like, I want to start selling. I know you already said practice, 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 but if they're sort yes. of like, once you practice, you've given your tumblers to people, they've been tested and you feel more confident. What's your best piece of advice if somebody's getting started? Besides that, obviously. With, with Crystal Act products. Yeah. So um, with Crystal Act products, getting started after you practice and you have a fantastic looking piece that you want to sell, which I call functional art. Like this is a piece of artwork that you are mm -hmm. selling. Don't, um, don't undersell yourself. That was, is my biggest thing. Um, I was, you know, I was guilty of doing that for years, years. Oh, I also make paintings. I don't know. You can see, see some of my, my I, I see one right behind, behind me, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I used to do paintings too. And I would sell everything so cheap. And when I I was in for ceramics. I have like a couple of friends now who, you know, after they graduated, I actually never graduated because we ended up PCSing in the military. That's when you move. So mm -hmm. I'm right before I was supposed to graduate. And anyhow, but I have some friends who um, now sell their like ceramic mugs for over a hundred dollars. I mean, these things are works of art, you know? Mm -hmm. So I don't see the difference between that and then doing what I do. I, it takes a long time. So don't, don't sell a tumbler for $20. Mm -hmm. You're not going to make any money. Um, that like is your cost right there. I mean, I don't know, depending on a little, it's like a little bit more like, 20, right. but barely any, um, don't value your time, value your time is what I will say. Yes. Um, so that's the first one. Um, second one, um, I would say, oh, make put in care cards. Oh yes. I wanted you to talk about that. Cause you said you do a couple different things I do. I do. to, to make sure yeah. people understand that they are, they have a piece of artwork in their possession. And yes, <laughs> I have two, I have one that goes in the cup. It's just a little care card. I know you can't read it, but you know, hand wash only towel dry and towel dry immediately. Do not soak, not dishwasher or microwave safe. And then a thank you one that says the same thing. And this is like on the outside of the if it's local pickup, stapled to the bag. If it's going in the, the box, then. But I'm actually redoing these, and they say, you're purchasing a piece of functional art. <laughs> yes, and do you order I those? Put, um, so, no, I um, bought this temp Etsy, and then I print them here on my home computer. I mean, Perfect. on my home printer. Yeah. Um, but I will be doing that because I'm now I'm going through so many of these, and I'm, I need to outsource more. Uh, yes. That's the thing. Uh, don't think you have to do it all yourself because I am the type of person who feel, I feel like I have to do it all myself. Mm -hmm. If, if I want to make a sticker, 
for my, I'm going to do it, you know, but don't do that. Don't be like me. Don't <laughs> it's okay to have personal touches and then outsource it. Make your, make what you want on procreate or some app and outsource. There's tons of people out there to help you. You can support other small business crafters that print and cut stickers for you because yes. I think we all kind of fall into that because we're, you know, we are the DIY people. Like we're going to, I'm going to design my logo. I'm going to do it all myself, but it takes yeah. a lot of time and effort to do that. So much time and effort. I spend I, a lot of time doing things that I don't really need to be doing. <laughs> yes. Like, okay. So here's a funny example, um, which I'm, I'm going to be doing a little video tutorial on it soon. But so back when I was making baby clothes, I'm like, oh, packaging, I'm going to make all my packaging. I bought stuff to make all of my own stamps. I was carving my own stamps for like the output of my packages and everything. And I still have all of my stamp making material. So that's just one of the things. Why spend $10 on a stamp pre-made when you can spend $100? And several hours. Yourself. <laughs> exactly. But that's a, just a, a crazy example of the crap that I do. I do that too with my cups or something. If like I need a decal, instead of just spending yeah. like $5 on Etsy, I'll be like, oh, I can recreate this yeah. myself. Three hours later, like just yeah. spend the $5 support another crafter. I have to keep yes. reminding myself this, like it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Yes, like with templates. Um, I just recently started buying templates on Etsy. Such a time saver. And before when I was doing like, I don't have any Buffalo plaid cups here, but when I was doing Buffalo plaid, I was, you know, going in and doing everything myself and it was taking so long. And now there's the template. I put it on there so much easier. Right. Like, like why, why did I waste all that time before? <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's so I have brand. one, I have two more questions for you. Okay. One, what is your favorite style of tumbler to make? Not necessarily your best seller, but one, what do you like to make the most? Um, I love my rose gold swirls because they never turn out the same and they are just so fun. And I love rose gold. Um, I so ended up buying some of the glitter you recommended, uh, yes, um, perfect. which I'm super excited about making. I'm waiting for my next case of tumblers to come in to, uh, to work. Yay. On. So oh, you yeah, love the rose yeah. gold because they're very unique. They are unique. Yeah. I love, um, I love those. My second one I would probably say is the beach. Um, and then I also like doing like the hand painted kind of ones, like the tie dye stuff. I like that because it's not glitter. I feel like I'm more um, involved. Yeah, yeah. You know? Like, yeah, I, I like those. But I, I, I also, I get bored easily. So I like to venture out and try. Others. And where, that, okay, I'm adding another question. Um, <laughs> yes. Where, <laughs> If you are feeling like you're in a little bit of like a rut, if you're feeling Ooh. like, ugh, like, I don't know, I'm uninspired. What do you like to do to sort of help yourself with that? Okay. So this is a, such a good question because I was laughing the other day because I have so many cups that are inspired by my baby's clothes, like, <laughs> like, like onesies. Okay. So here's an example. Hold on. She had on the, an outfit the other day. <laughs> which was, um, or that I, this is not the other day. This was like months. She's outgrew it, but it was just a pink onesie on top that was blush. And then she had on cheetah print bottoms. <laughs> I made this cup. Ba it's amazing. Um, Baby girl clothes are very cute. We should. Yes. I need to think yeah. about this next time my kids are wearing a cute outfit. <laughs> yeah. Anything fashion, but also I really get inspired by textiles. I used to like, you know, uh, weaving embroidery. I get inspired by textiles or I don't even like home decor too, like color, like different color palettes like that. Yeah. I don't know. I I'm so weird. I'm really so weird because I can see something and then all of a sudden it starts turning and I'm like, it's amazing. Oh, that like, That's amazing. Uh, I love that. Um, this has been so fun. I'm so glad we're talking. Can you remind everybody where they can find you on the internet to yes. follow you and connect with you? Because you're amazing and everybody should follow you wherever you are. Oh, thank <laughs> you. Yeah. So on um, Instagram, Lauren Rochelle Quigley is my main profile, but you can um, follow Lauren Quigley Creations 
Um, and it's the same on TikTok, Lauren Quigley-Jones. That's, that's me. I'm Lauren and I will put a link um, down in the description for anybody who wants to find you. <laughs> so thank you so much for joining us. You guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you enjoyed it and want more stuff like this, please let me know in the comments below. I'll see you next time.